Bug one guys. What's good? Welcome back to another episode of Mission Accomplished. Where we showcase the lives of those who have accomplished much. Uh, with your host, Lemuel Minamo and I'm your co-host, Tendo Ifiga. Now today we are here with Dr. Shiko Gita, a computer scientist and has done a PhD and a master's at the University of Cape Town. And the CEO of a company called Color. Yes. Okay, so tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, so you forgot another title. I'm also a mom. Oh. Yes, I am a mother. I have an eight and a half year old who also is trying to get a show like you. You have inspired many people to have a show. Yeah. I think his show will be about math and science. So let's see and wait what he's going to come up with. Okay. Um, so as, as you mentioned, my name is Dr. Shiko Gitao. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is very much like many, 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 many children in, in Africa. I was born in actually a slum in Nairobi called Madare, yeah. Um, then my parents moved to Nakuru where I grew up in a place called Ronda, which is another slum and I grew up happy. I'm the firstborn, even if I have a twin sister, I'm still the firstborn by four minutes to my twin sister. I have three siblings, my sister and two brothers. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a Christian home. My parents are both pastors. I grew up with, with the ethos of working hard and believing that God has a plan for everyone. So that, that for me is, the, is, the, is, is my childhood, yes. So I don't know if you know about personalities. I'm an extremely extroverted person. I like people. I like people around me. So my mom, my mom tells me until this day that when I was a child, I used to to do to bring all my friends like from kindergarten to class one to class four. All of my friends would come home to my mom's because I used to have a lot of friends, and because I, I used to have, love a lot of people around me, and I loved people around me. I used to have many friends playing with them, uh, but also I learned the art of working hard. Yeah, I always say many, all of us are born with potential. We are born very smart and very bright. However, we, we sometimes are lazy and do not work hard. So we have to work hard, right? So I, I learned the art of working hard when I went to Sunday, uh, secondary school and I, I failed a very major examination. And I learned that sometimes you, I'm a very, I always say I'm a very smart person. I know how to do mathematics. I know how to do sciences. It comes naturally to me. But when, even if you're born with these things, you have to go and read and study. If you're not studying, you don't know. Yes. So I, I did not do that and I failed. And that was the biggest lesson for me when I, in my childhood, before I was 18, is that no matter how good you are at something, you have to keep on working at it you all have to keep on working really really hard on it so that that is my lesson from my childhood yeah yeah so dr shiko and the viewers you matter okay i know that's very random but you matter unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light then you energy <laughs> i don't think you get it <laughs> but if you do then you are a very good scientist. This is true. So talking about science, mm -hmm. Dr. Shiko, what was your favorite subject back in school? Mathematics and chemistry and physics. I hear physics is hard. No, 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 there's nothing hard in life. We, we are born to do hard things, yes? In fact, my, 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 my mantra is do hard things, hashtag. I say about it, I talk about it every Monday is you, you have to always go towards the hard thing. The so, soft things in life will not lead you to the best places in life. But if you do hard things, you're opening opportunities for other people and for yourself. And you're able to experience life in a very different dimension than most people. So, you know, physics is not hard. You just have to open up your mind to the world of physics. And physics runs the world. He talked about matter, yeah, and energy. All of that is about physics. Do you have any hobbies? I actually uh, do. I, I run. I was told reading is not a hobby. So it I is. Saw, somebody told me because I read all the time. As long as if it's in your free time or it's something you like doing it. I love reading. Okay. I, I, I love reading because I, I like new knowledge. So I'm always reading books. I'm reading new material and information and papers. So I'm always reading. 
but I also love running. I've not run since COVID. I got, I got a really bad COVID, so it time affected a bit of my lungs. So I had to take a bit of break, then I became a bit of lazy, to be honest. But now I'm going back to running. I want to be able to try and run, or rather walk, the Stuntart Marathon this, this year. Uh, but I will definitely, I'm going back to like running, uh, which I used to do. I used to do a lot of running. I would run at least five to eight kilometers every day and at least uh, 21 kilometers over the weekend. And I tried running a marathon, uh, like not a timed one. I was training towards a, a timed marathon when I got sick with COVID. But now I'm, this year I'm going to start next year. I promise you, call me next year, I'll have run a marathon. What inspired you to become a CEO? Oh wow, that is a hard question. Because <laughs> I mean, so most people when they start a business, like I had your, I, I saw your dad's uh, thing. It's something he planned, he thought about it. He had an idea. When I started the company was, I always say it's God's plan, right? Because I had worked in corporate for a long time. I was very good at what I was doing in a corporate environment. And when my job came to an end, I thought maybe I'll go to work in another company and I had been offered jobs in another company. But that's important to have good mentors. I don't know if you know about the idea of mentorship. People who speak into your life and think and see your life in a very different way. One of my mentors called me and told me, you need to start a company. And I said, why? why, why what, what do you see in me that you think I can actually run a company? And he said, because you've been talking about being able to change the world using technology, it's about time you do it by, with, with your own terms. And that's what I did. He allowed me to see an opportunity with me, within myself and a potential within myself. And I started the company in, in um, end of 2019. And we really, we've really grown a lot. And that, now what keeps me, you know, what inspired me is different, but what keeps, you know, inspiration, starting something is very different from keeping and sustaining something. What keeps me is what we are doing at work is we are changing the world every single day. The people I work with, the work that we do is changing the world. We are working with technology around health. For example, during COVID, we worked on all, you remember, I don't, you guys maybe were a, bit, a little bit young, but you, you, know, you actually experienced it because schools were closed. Yeah. Yeah, schools were closed because our team did this data work that told the, the president, if you don't close schools, all these children are going to bring COVID back home and a lot of people are going to die. So they have, we had to close schools using data. That is part of our work, yeah? We work in health, we work in agriculture, we work in financial services, we help companies in how to think, how to integrate technology in their, in their way they're doing. We are, we, are, we are working on something called AI, you know, artificial intelligence, yeah. making it appropriate and useful for Africa. I don't have you used chat GPT. Yeah, I have. Think of chat GPT from Africa. That is what we are trying to do and helping like in local <laughs> languages, you can speak to it in Shen. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's what we want to do because we want people at any level everywhere in Africa to be able to use technology. I know we've mentioned your company, Carl, mm -hmm. but my burning question is, mm -hmm. what is Carl? Oh, that is a good question. So Kala is what we call a digital innovation lab. And we call it a lab because as we may be talking about chemistry and science, it's about testing different things to see what works and what doesn't work. Because life is about testing things to see what does work and doesn't work. And so is technology. So we're always trying to see what works and doesn't work and what is going to work for this continent of ours. So we build technology. We have all the people who work in the tech space that we work with them. Then you have people who are called advisors. These are people who go into companies or into organizations when they, they need somebody to help them think about something. And they sit with them and say, these are all our problems. And they say, let's break it down and let's prioritize. And then let's say, let's focus on this one. Yes. And then we have people who do prototyping where you want to, to see an, a good idea, but you don't have all the money all the time. So we quickly come up with something that we go and test and say, oh, this one is good because it's being liked by the user and it's being liked by the, by the customer and, and it, it can actually make us some money, yeah? Or something that can change the world. So, so that is what we do. So we are a technology company, but we like to think of ourselves as a lab because we experiment a lot and test many diff different things to see what works. Because this continent of us as Africa, because we are all over Africa, we're not just a Kenyan company, we are all over Africa and every part of Africa is very unique and different. I'd love for you guys to travel and maybe I should introduce you to some of my friends who are not in Kenya so you can go and talk to them about it because mm -hmm. you see it's very different and you need to be able to bring these different aspects about Africa for, for you to have a, a good 
technology product that you that people actually love. Do you necessarily let me say enjoy your work as a computer scientist? I absolutely love my work. I love every day I come to work. It's something different. So let's tell people when I, w I went to school at uni, what we learned at uni totally does not apply to this world at all. It is very old. Even what I did for my PhD is very old because my PhD was done when you guys were born. Yeah, when that's when I, when did were you born? Twenty. Yeah. Okay, I graduated when when you were born. That's my PhD. That makes me feel very old. Oh my goodness, you are my PhD anniversaries. <laughs> uh, um, so I graduated in in June of twenty. Yeah, on, in June of 2012, no, 2013 actually, 2013, with my PhD, right? Yeah. And when, but, but when I was doing my PhD, it was cutting edge, it was the only thing in the world. Right now, when I told people that I do my PhD, they say, ah, but that one is just common. That is a good thing about computing, because it's always changing every day and makes sure that you're always on top of it. That's why I said I like reading, and people think like reading is not um, uh, a hobby because it's what I do every day. But it, I keep reading for, to make sure that I'm always on top of what is happening every day. Yeah. yeah so, so I absolutely love. And the, the big part of my job that I actually love is changing the world. Because I'm not just writing code or designing or doing advisory work for the sake of doing it. It's every piece of work that we do, we tie it back to, are we changing the world? So at Color, we have a, a mission to be able to touch 100 million lives with technology products and services by 2032. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite sport? Running. That's a sport. Okay. Marathon is running, no? It is it, it is running. It is, it is running. Yeah. And I believe it's a sport. So, so, I hope so. <laughs> who is your favorite African mm -hmm. runner? I have between Omanyala, Eliud Kipchoge, and Kipi Kipiogon. If you are to become an animal mm -hmm. for one day, mm -hmm. what animal would you become? An eagle. Why? Why? Because an eagle... So people talk about the eagle going up all the way, so, be li living up in the sky, all of that. I love that about the eagle. It's quite admirable. But what I love about the eagle the most, it, it knows when to stop and regenerate. So when an eagle becomes old, and it comes to me in terms of years or in terms of like changing a season, it goes and hides itself and literally painfully plucks all its feathers, yeah, beats uh, its beak on a rock and breaks it, breaks its, uh, they're called, not toes, what are they called? Nails. Toes. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not called toenails, but removes everything and puts itself in a very vulnerable place so that it can regenerate. So does it regrow? Yes, then it regrows into somebody, something fresh. So when it comes out, it's like being reborn. And so that is something that human beings are not very good at. And that's something I'm trying to teach myself is that when I'm tired and like now I want to go into that season of, I am tired, I just want to go and regenerate, yeah? You go and, you know all this, you're calling me Dr. Shiko, very important, special person. You stay away from all those stories. You go and find yourself and then come out into something, something, some, as somebody different, yeah. So now, mm -hmm. what would you tell young viewers who aspire to mm -hmm. be like you? Mm -hmm. What is the best piece of advice that you give them? So um, I organize my, my, my best pieces of advice into three C's, yeah? Character, consistency, and conviction. Character is, you can be, as I mentioned earlier, you can be talented. You guys are extremely talented, right? Yes. Yes, you're extremely talented. Oh, at your age, I was not doing what you're doing. <laughs> I was busy playing outside. Um, so you're very talented, but talent only opens the door for you. Your character keeps you, yeah? Your character to having work ethic, being able to work hard, being a person of integrity, being a person of faith, all of those things are built in your character. And that is extremely important. And you, if you're able to find it when you're young, even better. And you want to find everything when you're young, you're going to find some things like integrity. Don't steal from anybody. Don't be corrupt. Don't lie to people. Don't take shortcuts in life. You know, small things that you can pick that your parents always talk to you about. 
Then the second part of it is consistency, yeah? Make sure you are the same person throughout. Not when you're your parents, you're different. When you're your friends, you're different. Be the same person in every room you're in. Because then people know who you are and you don't have to be thinking, who was I in this room? Do they know who I am? All those things, you stop questioning those things. And number four is conviction. Some people call it passion. I call it conviction. There's a very slight difference between conviction and passion. Conviction is what keeps you going because you're doing something because of utter belief of changing lives and changing the world. So that is my advice. Yes, unfortunately, I'm being called for my meeting. Yes. Okay, so yes. thank you for your time. Yes. Do you have anything to say to the viewers? If Standard Chartered is watching this, you can invite Dr. Shiko for the next marathon. Um, if you want to become a computer scientist, remember the three C's. Uh, yeah, thanks I think it for was, coming. what were the three C's again? Yes, what were they? Com Com Character. 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 Was Cons there consistency and conviction? conviction. Yes. 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 If you do not know what they do, those three things you mean when then research. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This, this was so much fun. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming. coming. <laughs> and um, uh, we hope that you will tune in to our next episodes of Mission Accomplished. Thank you for your time and bye yeah. bye. Bye. We are Mtotonese a digital platform that empowers children. We curate and create engaging content about and by children through audio, video, writing, and infographics. We believe children should be players, not spectators. Through child-led research, we amplify young voices, shaping policies and programs. To partner or donate, send an email to info at intotonews.com or call 07 Make making children visible.